China says it has built an artificial moon that can make frogs and pretty much anything else float in the air. Here are the details. The South China Morning Post reports that China has built a research facility that simulates low-gravity environments like that found on the moon. Chinese scientists told the news outlet that the facility revolves around a chamber that is 60 centimeters wide. The facility creates a vacuum inside the chamber, where strong electromagnets then create a magnetic field that pushes upward against objects that are placed in the chamber. This allows scientists to recreate the lunar atmosphere by arranging dust and rocks that are similar to that found on the moon, and then reducing their weight in the same way lunar gravity would reduce their weight. Researchers can then test how different types of equipment will endure the temperatures and stress of the real lunar surface. The system works by applying so much magnetic force to even non-metallic objects like frogs that it changes the flow of electrons around the atoms of the object. The electrons then rearrange themselves in such a way that they produce their own magnetic field to oppose the applied field. In this way, even animals have been made to levitate in the air. The technology behind this new facility was first exhibited by researchers at the Radboud University in the Netherlands, who famously used powerful magnets to make a frog float in the air. It could be said that the study of electricity is the study of magic. And the magic of magnetism is part of this invisible but very powerful force. New data shows the sun's radiation is interacting with the Earth's core to create dangerous electrical slamdowns on Earth. Here are the details. The European Space Agency, or ESA, reports that clusters of spacecraft it had launched in recent years are showing that solar radiation is interacting with the Earth's core to create harmful electromagnetic microstorms on Earth. Scientists took data from a cluster of four ESA satellites orbiting far away from Earth and combined it with data from a trio of ESA satellites that orbit close to Earth to measure magnetic signals emanating from Earth's core, crust, and oceans. The data showed that an electromagnetic phenomenon called bursty bulk flows in outer space is connected to intense magnetic field fluctuations near Earth's surface. Bursty bulk flows are bursts of ions that travel at a whopping 150 kilometers per second. The new data shows that the fluctuations near Earth are connected to field-aligned currents high above Earth that contain these fast-moving bursty bulk flows. Scientists say they can now confirm that intense magnetic field perturbations near Earth are connected to the arrival of such bursty bulk flows farther out in space. Researchers think the new data can help them predict where solar storms could strike the hardest. One of the hardest electromagnetic slamdowns hit Quebec during a solar storm in 1989, destroying electrical equipment and causing a major blackout. In 1859, a massive solar storm hit the Earth, turning the night sky into an eerily beautiful version of daytime. But the storm also caused significant damage to Earth's primitive communication system of the time, the telegraph system. If such a powerful magnetic wave were to hit the Earth today, our highly sensitive communication systems would crash and burn. A new study now says the global internet would be the hardest to fix and could be knocked out for months on end. Here are the details. Wired Magazine reports that a new study shows that the internet could be knocked out for many months if a massive solar storm hits the planet again, like it did in 1859 and 1921. Researchers looked at the infrastructure required to keep the world's internet running and found that undersea internet cables would be most at risk. While the optical fibers inside these cables can't be damaged by magnetized solar particles, their electronic repeaters can get permanently fried. These electrical devices are placed between 50 and 150 kilometers apart, and they have the very important function of boosting the signal before it fades inside the cables. The study found that while regional internet grids could be fixed quickly, international internet connections could be knocked out for weeks because it would take a long time to replace hundreds of repeaters situated at the bottom of the ocean. The study was done by assistant professor Sangeetha Abdu Jyothi from the University of California, who said the issue needs to be studied more deeply, as little is known about how solar storms would affect power systems under the ocean. Abdu Jyothi added that the undersea cables near the Earth's poles would be affected more severely by solar storms, while cables near the equator would be less affected. A NASA spacecraft has touched the sun. Here's what you need to know. For the first time ever, a spacecraft has touched the sun, with NASA announcing its Parker Solar Probe has flown through the sun's upper atmosphere. 
The milestone was reached on April 28th during the probe's eighth flyby of the sun, and CNN notes that it will ultimately make 21 close approaches over seven years. The sun has no solid crust, but the Alvin critical surface marks the boundary of its atmosphere, according to the Johns Hopkins University Applied Physics Laboratory. Outside it, solar wind particles travel faster than the magnetic waves that couple them to the sun's surface. Inside it, the opposite is true, and thus the particles are contained by the waves. The Parker probe flew in and out of this boundary several times over a few hours during April and collected data on the origin of zigzag-shaped structures in the solar wind. It found that these structures, called switchbacks, can be produced by convection cells at the sun's visible surface, which churn and create funnels of magnetic energy above the surface. When the probe set off in 2019, it had to contend with the fact that the Earth travels 67,000 miles per hour in a sideways motion relative to the sun to avoid being pulled into it, meaning any object traveling to the sun must cancel that motion. In order to do this, it was launched by the powerful Delta IV heavy rocket before performing seven Venus flybys over a seven-year period, relying on the planet's gravity to draw its orbit closer to the sun. Such a massive workload is ultimately aimed at solving mysteries like why the sun's corona, or outer atmosphere, is millions of degrees hotter than the sun's surface, or improving forecasts of space weather events, which can disrupt telecommunications and damage satellites around Earth, according to NASA. A massive storm over the sun discharged the largest solar flare in three years on Sunday, November 29th. The sun experienced a massive explosion known as a coronal mass ejection behind the southeast solar limb on Sunday. This was an M-class flare, which is a medium-sized blast. While the flare was not Earth-directed and was partially eclipsed by the sun, it did cause radio blackouts in the South Atlantic. However, Sunday's flare is just part of the beginning of a new solar cycle, which is called the solar minimum, and scientists expect a period of increasing activity and explosive sunspots until the solar maximum in roughly mid-2025. A more violent X-class flare directed toward Earth could cause fluctuations in power grids as well as high-frequency radio blackouts and navigational issues over the sunlit part of Earth. Humans are more vulnerable to solar flare now because of our increasingly digital society and reliance on satellite-based communications. According to NASA, solar flares take place when magnetic energy built up within the sun's atmosphere is suddenly released. They impact everything on the electromagnetic spectrum, from radio waves to X-rays. The energy released is equivalent to millions of 100 megaton nuclear bombs exploding at the same time. China has broken ground on a project that aims to put miles of solar panels in space and use them to power a massive microwave emitter that will hang 23,000 miles up in the sky. Here is hoping that the giant microwave beam does not go off target and start frying miles of Earth's surface. Here are the details. The Times reports that China's government plans to launch a fleet of mile-long solar panels into space by 2035 and beam the energy back to Earth. The basic concept involves a space station with a solar array to convert solar energy into electrical energy, then it would use the microwave transmitter or laser emitter to transmit the energy to a collector on Earth. The Earth-based station will then transfer the microwave energy back into electrical energy from where it would be fed into the grid. As part of this ambitious project, Beijing has broken ground on the new Bishan Space Solar Agency station in the city of Chongqing. The station will begin tests by the end of the year, with the hope of having a functioning 1-megawatt solar energy station by 2030. By 2050, China plans to have the station fully operational and producing a gigawatt of power, the same output as the largest nuclear reactor in China. Space-based solar systems can be much more efficient because it's always sunny in space, and the sunlight does not get filtered by Earth's atmosphere and clouds. The idea of space-based solar power stations has been around since 1941. Science fiction writer Isaac Asimov first wrote about them in the short story Reason. In the story, he wrote about a space station that transmits energy collected from the sun to various planets by using microwave beams. A number of concept designs were created in the 1970s, but none were deemed economically viable. For more news animations and explainers, hit the subscribe and bell button to join the Tomo News family. Thanks for watching.